Welcome to Biblical Foundations for Africa, an in-depth look at the Bible as we learn how to discover God for ourselves as Christians in Africa. Join the Biblical Foundations team as they lead you through this exciting journey through the Bible. Let's get started. Sanbonani! That's a Zulu greeting from South Africa, and it's wonderful to have you joining us at Biblical Foundations for Africa, coming to you from Johannesburg in South Africa. You know, we exist to encourage every single African Christian to read, to believe, and to understand the Bible for themselves, and then to go out into every single sphere of our society and make Jesus Christ glorious. My name is Norma, and you can consider me your traveling companion as as we journey through the Bible. Today we're starting a series of foundation building devotions called What's Wrong with the World? There's no doubt that we live in a very beautiful world, especially if you live in Africa like I do. We have nothing but the most beautiful sunsets, scenic forests, exquisite beaches, majestic mountain ranges, amazing animals, and the most friendly people you have ever met. But do you ever get the feeling that things are not as they should be? That there's something wrong with the world and that there's just something that's just not right? Well, if you ever get this feeling and you've wondered about it, you're not the only one. Every time someone tells a lie about us or we experience unfair treatment at work, something within us screams, this is not right. Every time a baby or a very young person dies, we get the sense that there's something wrong with this and that life shouldn't be this way. Every time a woman is raped or an innocent person is murdered or someone steals from us, our hearts cry out, there is something wrong with the world where some such things can happen. You know, you have every right to believe that there's something wrong with the world because the Bible tells us that we live in a broken world. The Bible tells us that this is not the way God created it to be, but this is how it has become. So during this extensive series called What's Wrong with the World, we want to explore what the Bible says or has to say about this question. It's so important that we get the Bible's perspective on what's wrong with the world because unless we can diagnose the problem properly, all the remedies we might propose will be wrong. So we want the right diagnosis so that we can have the right cure. So today as we ask the question, what's wrong with the world? The first answer we will find the Bible tells us is that the world is broken and fallen because of original sin. Original sin is also called ancestral sin. And this is the idea that all of humanity right throughout the ages is sinful. So let's look at five things that the Bible has to say about original sin. Firstly, original sin is tied to the sin of Adam, who was the first man. Genesis 3 tells us the sad story of how the first woman was lured by the serpent into disobeying God and how she in turn lured her husband, the first man, to join her in the sin. This disobedience resulted in disastrous consequences that we shall explore in weeks to come. But one of the main consequences of that first sinful act by Adam and his wife Eve is that they fell from their sinless perfection. They were no longer pure, no longer perfect, no longer clothed in the glory of God. They were cursed and cast out of the Garden of Eden, that special place where they used to fellowship with God. So original sin started with the disobedience of the very first man and woman in the Garden of Eden. Secondly, original sin means that all of humanity has inherited a fallen nature. You see, it's not just some people that inherited the sin gene. It's everyone. Every single man, woman and child who is born into the earth is born with the sin problem, which is called the fallen nature. Listen to what Romans chapter 5 verse 12 says. Therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man and death through sin, and in this way death came to all people because all sinned. 
You see, just like some genetic diseases can be passed on from grandparents to parents to children and then to grandchildren, sin is a spiritual disease that has been passed on from our forefathers, Adam and Eve, right down through all the human family to you and me. And unfortunately, we pass it on to our children. So the second thing about original sin is that all humanity has inherited a fallen nature from our first father and mother, Adam and Eve. Thirdly, original sin has affected every single aspect of the human nature. This means that our hearts, our minds, our will, our emotions, our thoughts and our desires are enslaved to sin and disobedience. For example, how many times have you promised yourself that you wouldn't fall into that bad habit again, that you wouldn't eat too much, that you wouldn't think those bad thoughts or say those bad words or go to that bad place or drink too much, and yet you find yourself doing exactly that thing that you promised yourself you would never do again. Jesus calls this being enslaved to sin. In John chapter 8 verse 34, Jesus says, Very truly I tell you, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 2 further explains that before we receive Christ into our lives, we are children of disobedience, rebellious children who do the opposite of what God commands and desires. So original sin affects every single aspect of our bodies, our spirits and our souls and makes us slaves to sin. Without Christ, that's all that we are, slaves to sin. Fourthly, original sin brings the wrath or the anger of God. Many people don't like to hear this because they want God to be a nice grandfather up in the sky who's never angry with anyone, who never punishes anyone. They want him to be a God who disregards sin and feels sorry for us even when we do wrong. But this is not the nature of God. A while ago, we did a series called Who Are You, God? And one of the things we found out is that God is a just God. We found out that God would not be loving or good if he was not angry and did not punish sin. Maybe you want to go back into our archives to listen to this lesson to refresh your memory if you've forgotten. The Bible tells us very clearly that sin brings the wrath or the anger of God. Listen to Romans chapter 1 verse 18. It says, The wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. My friends, God is very angry at sin and disobedience. Let us not kid ourselves. Our sinful nature attracts the wrath or the anger of God, just like tall trees attract lightning. This leads on to the fifth and final point about original sin, which is that it results in death. The final consequence of sin and disobedience is death. That's the warning that God gave to Adam in Genesis chapter 2 verse 17. He said, In the day that you eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall surely die. In other words, if he disobeyed God's law, he would bring death to himself. Now, Romans chapter 5 verse 12, which we already read above, tells us that because we are all born with the disease of sin in our lives, we all die Because we are all sinners. Let me tell you something else. Death comes in so many forms. Our sinful habits and our lifestyles cause our bodies to degenerate and we lose our health. Sin in our relationships causes our hearts and our emotions to shut down and become hardened and broken. Our sinful minds cause us to make foolish decisions that lead to financial disasters. Our impatience, our anger, our selfishness causes us to get involved in road accidents, which can be fatal. There are so many terrible consequences that are as a result of our sinful nature. We suffer from our own sins and we suffer from other people's sinful decisions and sinful choices. Death comes in so many forms, but the ultimate death is the death of our bodies. 
If you have ever wondered why death is a painful reality in our world, well, the Bible's explanation is original sin. That's the reason why every single man, every woman, and every child dies. Sin is serious, my friends. The penalty of sin is spiritual, emotional, and physical death. Well, we found out the first answer that the Bible gives to the question, what's wrong with the world? The Bible tells us that original sin is what's wrong with the world. It tells us that original sin is tied to the sin of our first forefather, Adam. Secondly, that due to original sin, all of humanity has inherited a fallen nature. Thirdly, original sin affects every single aspect of the human nature, including our bodies, our souls, and our minds. Fourthly, original sin brings the wrath or the anger of God. And fifth and finally, original sin results in death, spiritual, emotional, and physical death. But let me leave you with this one small encouragement, which we will ex explore in further detail in future sessions. Romans chapter 6 verse 23 tells us that the wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So, although original sin is a reality, and it is the fundamental thing that is wrong with our world, we have hope, and his name is Jesus Christ. Let's come to the Father in humble prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us your written word in the form of the Bible. Lord, I thank you that the Bible has an answer to every problem and every question. Thank you that it reveals the true problem in the world. And thank you that it also reveals the true answer who is Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Join us again next time right here at Biblical Foundations for Africa as we continue with this series called What's Wrong with the World? Check out our website for more resources that will help you with any further questions that you might have. Go on and chat to us on any of our social media channels. Be blessed and remember as you go out today to make Jesus glorious. Thank you for joining us today on our Biblical Foundations for Africa lesson. To find out more information, join us on our website, www.biblicalfoundationsafrica.com. Also, we'd love to have you as our friend on our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter. See you next time.